when I was a boy, I used to wonder what would happen if you took everything away. If there were no people, no earth, no sun, no stars, nothing at all. And then I found it very difficult because the idea of there being nothing, but there was nobody to know there was nothing. And so what would there be? And the more I thought about it, I thought, I'm either at the edge of true enlightenment or I'm going to go mad. And so I forgot about it and moved on to do other things and became a scientist. But years later, I became increasingly troubled by this and decided late in life to have a journey and see if I could find an answer to this question and discovered, in fact, the Greek philosophers 3,000 years ago had worried about the same thing. And it is indeed remarkably difficult to think about nothing. So much so that I discovered the philosophers thought it was not possible to have nothing. The phrase nature abhors a vacuum is what they said. And the reasons why it turns out was that everything seems to go against it. You try to make a vacuum, it's very, very difficult. So I became fascinated to discover that this had troubled people throughout thousands of years. And uh, come to the modern picture, via the scientific route that in the 16th, 17th century they started making vacuum and wondered what its properties were. They discovered that as they sucked air out of things, there got to be a point where there was apparently nothing left. This is what they call a vacuum. They discovered that if you've got a little bell ringing inside the vacuum, the nearer you got to vacuum, the softer and softer the bell got, until eventually you could, you could hear nothing at all. Because you have to have air vibrating to send the sound from me to your ears at the moment. And if the air's not there, if there's a vacuum, there's nothing to transmit the sound. But light travels through a vacuum. And so vacuum had got some very funny properties. It allowed some things to travel through and other things it didn't. This was fascinating to them. Then you gradually realise that uh, as you go to higher and higher altitude, air pressure gets less, less and less, and so the atmosphere is only finite size, and outside it there is nothing. So the idea that space is empty, and indeed it's true, if you travel from here to the far reaches of the, the universe, in the spacecraft, within the first few hundred yards above the Earth, you'd have travelled through about 60% of everything you're going to travel through, and within a few miles you've travelled through 99.99999% of all matter you'll ever see. It's empty out there. At least that's what we thought. This last century we moved into profound things like the idea of quantum theory. And we then discovered that you can't have nothing. You might remove everything you think there is, like air and gas and matter and all the things that we can see and easily imagine. But it turns out that what you're left with is not empty nothingness, but a seething vacuum full of stuff. Weird little transient particles that you can't actually see, but they can affect things. We know they're there. You can do experiments and detect them sort of flitting around even though you can't see them. You can feel their effects. And experiments are the things that tell you what is real and what isn't. And starting in 2007, the end of the year, hopefully, at CERN, in Geneva, the biggest experiment ever done in history is going to begin, which is going to attempt to recreate what the vacuum of the universe was like a billion for the billion to the second after the Big Bang. It'll be a huge leap in our understanding of nothing. But it will then leave the real question. And so what happened before that? What happened before the Big Bang? Was that real nothing? And it's very hard to think about that, just the same way as you who are listening to me at this moment. Where were you two years before you were born? I mean, that's as near to nothing as you could imagine. And if you start thinking about it, you go mad. There's nothing that bugs me as much as nothing.
I've written a book about nothing. I hope you find something in it.